Welcome to the Eaton Auto Shift Driver's Training Presentation. Please note that what we don't cover in this video, you'll find detailed in your driver's instruction manual. We recommend you read through the manual before you drive the auto shift. This video is to be used as a reference for vehicles equipped with the auto shift transmission only. This includes all models ending with the designation AS, AS2, or AS3. In this video, we'll be looking at starting operation, mode usage, launching, and shutdown procedures. Let's begin with the basics. There are two key components in the cab, a shifter to select different operating modes, and a gear display, which will display the gear or operating mode you're in and the gear you're moving to. Please note that in the legacy auto shift products, the gear display will show up and down arrows to indicate the need to slow down or speed up the input shaft. Eaton offers two shifters, a lever and a push button. Regardless of the configuration, the shifter has five operating modes, reverse, neutral, drive, manual, and low. There are also up and down buttons and a service light. Different OEMs may provide their own shifters and displays, but most of their functions are the same. If you're not using Eaton Design components, just be sure to refer to your vehicle manual for instructions on the location and use of your shift control. Okay, let's take a look at startup procedures. First, make sure the shifter is in neutral. Put your foot on the brake before starting the engine. Next, depress the clutch and turn the key to the on position. At power up, the auto shift will go through a self test. You'll notice that the service light comes on and goes off, and the gear display shows a solid N, indicating that you're in neutral. If the service light remains lit or the gear display shows a dash, this indicates that neutral is not confirmed and the engine will not start. Assuming you've achieved normal power up with a solid N in the gear display, just depress the clutch and start the engine. Then release the clutch pedal. Releasing the clutch pedal lets auto shift register input shaft speed. This is important because if auto shift doesn't register input shaft speed, you won't be able to get into your initial starting gear. Now, let's take a look at auto shift's driving modes. Reverse mode allows reverse motion in multiple gear ratios, depending on the transmission models. Neutral is your starting mode and no gears are selected. In drive mode, all shifting decisions are made by the transmission controller. Manual mode allows you to make all shift decisions from starting to motion. Low mode is the lowest available gear. When stationary, low mode will provide the driver with the lowest possible forward gear and hold that gear. When moving, low mode can be used to maximize engine brake efficiency. All downshifts will occur at the highest possible engine RPM. The upshift and downshift buttons can only be used in drive, reverse, and manual modes. Selecting the up or down arrows allows you to determine initial gear selection or shift schedule. All right, now it's time to launch the vehicle. First, apply your service brake. This is important because just like your own personal car, if the auto shift doesn't register brake input, you won't be able to get into your initial starting gear. You'll need to continue applying the service brake until you're ready to move your foot to the throttle during the actual launch. Now with your foot still on the brake, release the vehicle parking brakes and then select a mode. The process of selecting a starting gear is the same whether you select reverse, drive, manual, or low mode. First apply your service brake and release the parking brake. Take the clutch all the way to the floor. This stops the input shaft so auto shift can get in gear. Then choose your startup mode. The gear display will flash the gear you're going to. If the display is also showing down arrows, it's an indication that the input shaft hasn't slowed down. Continue to depress the clutch pedal until the arrows go off. Once the arrows go off, the gear display may continue to flash telling you that your gear hasn't fully engaged. Slowly let out on the clutch pedal until the number is solid. 
If you select a driver manual, you'll be able to select different starting gears using the up and down arrow buttons, depending on how your vehicle is programmed. If the display flashes the gear you want, again slowly let out the clutch until the gear display is solid with that gear. Now you can move your foot from the brake pedal to the throttle to launch the vehicle. Auto shift only requires you to use the clutch when selecting a starting gear and when stopping. Let's take a look at the procedures for shutting down your vehicle. When stopping your vehicle, regardless of your driving mode, depress the clutch as you come to a stop. When shutting down, first select neutral and release the clutch when the display is a solid N. Now, set the parking brake and turn off the key. After the key is turned off, you may hear the transmission make shifting noises for about 20 seconds. This is normal for the auto shift. Finally, here are a few important do's and don'ts when operating the auto shift. Do use the clutch when launching from a stop. Do engage the parking brake when coming to a complete stop. Always shut down in neutral mode. Here are a few critical don'ts to avoid transmission damage. Don't slip the clutch or use the throttle to hold the vehicle on grades. Doing so may excessively heat the clutch, causing permanent damage. If you have overheated the clutch, a CA will flash in the gear display and a tone will sound. It's important to note that throttle control may be taken away from the driver if the clutch temperature is too high. Do not continue operation until the CA is removed from the gear display and the tone no longer sounds. This will allow time for the clutch to cool. Don't shut down in gear as it may cause the transmission to become torque locked. That's it. Again, for more detailed information, please refer to your driver's instruction manual. Thanks for watching.